got you dancing to his hit, You Touch Me. And now he has released his tribute to Mandela. Musical legend Doné joins me on City of Dreams. Welcome to City of Dreams. Uh, it's good to be here. How are you doing? Fine, thanks. How are you? I'm good, but I'm good. So 25 years in any industry is a long time. Yeah. Very, very long time. Mm. But tell us, you know, how it all started. Take us back to the beginning. Well, I started many years, years ago when I, was, uh, when I was about eight years old. And uh, I got opportunity to, to play in a band, uh, drums. And when I started playing, I've always been playing. I've never stopped playing. And uh, we were talking earlier, you know, and in where, where I grew up, uh, there was like all these bands, you know, it was a time of bands, you know. It was just like, uh, I come from a, it wasn't a big uh, place, it's out to in, in the Karoo. Yeah. So it was not really a big place, but people love music so much and there was always musicians. And uh, there was, there was, about four or five bands in that town, you know, so you could go to any band and, and I want to join the band or just sit around and, and watch the guys playing. And uh, uh, it was a, a time of good music. It was great music out there, you know. T Connection, Earth, Wind and Fire, Stevie Wonder, you know, uh, Commodores and, uh, and, and so many, you know. I mean, the list goes on and we just learned from all that stuff, George Benson and them. And, and then gospel year, you know, <laughs> and then a ballroom band there. And this man with all this wisdom, he's telling me all these things. I used to sit with him for hours and hours and just tell me about the music and stuff. And uh, so as you grow up, all you want to do is play music. So people knew already that this is what I want to do. I used to tell my teachers, one day you'll see me on TV. I'm going to be a star. I'm gonna oh, be. wow. You know, so I knew like a lot of, I've got two daughters and they still don't know. One is uh, first year in the university, the other one is in matric. And they still don't know what they want to do, you know. But I knew back uh, then, many years ago, you know, when I was when I was a kid, I, I, I knew 10, 12, This is what I want to do. I, I mean, you spoke about your upbringing, which is very interesting because I think that how you're raised and in the environment that you raised can either yeah. make or break you. Yeah. Did your parents ever want you to become a lawyer or a doctor, or did they always support your dream? Everybody in my family is all like learned people, you know. I was the only one that uh, chose the music, but the music came from my father, you know. And uh, so they couldn't really do much about it to say, no, I'm going to stop this boy. They, they tried. I got the most hidings <laughs> and I'm still upset with my father <laughs> for the hidings because I used to sneak out at night to go and play in a nightclub, make okay. like I'm sleeping. Oh, and, wow. Uh, it wasn't so much crime in that place, so there wasn't burglar bars. So I could get out of the window, you know what I mean? And uh, then some of my uncles saw me and said, I'm going to tell your father <laughs> you were here. And then I, I, it was just like, you know, when is this thing going to stop? And then eventually, <coughs> they, uh, they supported it, you know what okay. I mean? But I, it was a big fight. I, I had to fight for it, you know what I mean? And I had to earn, I, I had to really earn it. And they could see there's nothing they could do. And uh, that's how I just uh, left, you know? But I mean, I think with every dream, of course, there is that element of fight because, you know, it's not easy to do anything that you want to do. You have to, you know, fight and, and push. Do yeah. you think that that helped you become a, a more disciplined artist because you had to work hard and because you had to prove yourself? I think in, in, in our era, there was no pop, pop idols and pop stars. There was Road to Fame, Shell Road to Fame back in the day. Uh, and you had to go and audition and stuff just like this. But it was different. It wasn't like a pop star, like you would be now. You know, you would win it. I, I won't win it, you know, uh, uh, with my look right now and my age. But you would, you, you got the look and you're young and fresh. So uh, <clears throat> you just got to have the voice and the attitude and you can, yeah, you can win it. And some people don't even have the voice, <laughs> but, they, but they go through. So it's, a, it's another story. But uh, we were the kind of musicians uh, uh, that was playing music. There was no DJs. Those days were uh, uh, breakdance music was yes, in and yes. stuff like that. So uh, we were starting playing music and going to towns to get jobs and stuff. And, uh, and he said, no, look, uh, it's that time now, it's, it's disco, you know? They don't want bands now. And then, so you got to look for venues and stuff. So we were the real musicians that was doing it the real way, you know? Yes. The struggling way, we were uh, performing, rehearsing songs. And even when, uh, uh, with me, uh, I played with, with a lot of artists. I met people like Yvonne Chaka Chaka, yes. Steve Kakadas, yeah. Uh, uh, Chico, the legends. The, the legends. legends. Uh, in 2010, I, I, they, they asked me to to do the uh, uh, to to be the musical director for the legends uh, concerts in the, or the World Cup, and uh, so with about 16 artists that were backing, but everybody was doing two songs, three songs. So the whole list of of of, of them that uh, that we did. 
But anyway, <clears throat> so back in those days, you have to write music to become famous, you know, to get a deal. Yes. Today, they, you get a song, you go on TV, and uh, you win something. Yes. And some of the guys that was doing well, people remember them, and if they, if they clever enough, they can use that platform to 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 uh, uh, become successful as well, like a lot of bands that uh, uh, in pop stars and stuff. So that is how it happened, you know. But I was lucky enough that they used one of my songs that you had to audition in pop stars. Yes. You know what I mean? You touched me. You had to, uh, you had to, it was one of the songs. Which was a hit. Yeah. Which was a hit. Uh, tell us a bit about coming up with the song. And, you know, it's something I was listening to it this morning. Mm. And it was one of those things. Oh, this song. I cannot believe this song. It's still hot. Tell us a bit about what went into developing a hit like that. Uh, you talk about You Touch Me? Yes. It was just like um, I was in Cape Town that time. And uh, I was doing uh, one-man band stuff, you know, like playing in pubs. And I just backtracked. But uh, every move you make, but the Puff Daddy version of, 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 of that song. And you can do, like, Stand By Me on that song. You can do every move you make, every step you take to sting. And there was, like, seven minutes. This backtrack was seven minutes long. So after I've done all those two songs, I was... I needed to sing more yes. because otherwise it's the music playing, you know? Yes. And, and I just started singing You Touch Me. And I realized what, what they, this is actually a song. <laughs> Let me go to the studio and just like Record put the it. verses together. And it was a very easy, it's a love song actually. It should be a slow song, but I put a beat to it. And then people change the words to, to I said it touch me honey, but they said it touch me honey. Okay. You know what I mean? And then they changed to that. But if you listen to the whole thing, it's, it's actually a love song. Yes. You know, uh, uh, but... Uh, uh, up-tempo uh, love song. And the song did wonders for me, amazing things, you know, changed my life. And uh, so I've, I've been performing, I, back, I, I, I was on big shows, like with Shaggy concerts. Yes, yes, I was all yes. over the place, you know, we were just like everywhere. I Israel, mean, yeah, the, and, and, you, and you talk about how you, you, you came from a small town, Cape Town, traveling, but Joburg is really the city of dreams, hence, you the know, reason the name of the I show. Came, yeah. Tell us about the it. The reason why I came to Johannesburg, <laughs> because a lot of people that lives there would go to Cape Town. You okay. Know? And Cape Town is beautiful and everything, but I just saw the lights, the city lights, and uh, sometimes I see the bands performing, you know, on, on festivals, like a, a Rand Easter show, and I'm, I'm, I'm looking and I said, I want to be there. I need to be there. Yes. And, and, if, and I'm one of the person, uh, uh, I'm the kind of person that I, I see something, I'm going to be there, and I'll see, see myself there sure. uh, in two years or three years. You know, I grew up uh, with a time with a lot of uh, local uh, South African music, Brenda Fassi, Von Chaka Chaka, and I used to go to pubs and started going to, uh, to, uh, to clubs. And I, I, I could hear these songs, like, uh, uh, thank you, Mr. DJ, and those songs. And after a few years, I was playing with the Von Chaka Chaka. We were wow. touring all over Africa, you know what I mean? Uh, one day I went to Sun City, and we just went there to, to, uh, to do some, just for the day. And when I got back that same week, they asked me, can I uh, do the pub in Sun City for like two months? So when I go to a place, then I end up there, you That's know, or, or, or something happened. But I've, I've, I've played with these artists back in the day. I'm also an original member of Rasta Rebels, uh, the original band, uh, in 2029, uh, came up with Give Me Hope Joanna. It was a song, an Eric Grant song that we took. And it, uh, we, we recorded a lot of that stuff. But that project was there. And uh, the guy that did it was a studio concept. He said, uh, Chris Galakas, he said, why don't you guys just change your name to Rasta Rebels? Sure. You play at Pink Head Lake, Thunder Dome here for, I think, 6,000 rand a week, the whole band. But these people are looking for you and they want to pay you. Six, eight thousand in a night. Sure. You must just change your name. And we went, <laughs> we are like a real overnight success uh, uh, story that, you know what I mean? The next day we were just like stars in every magazine, in everything. Just know? wrapping up um, quickly, thank you so much for joining us. But now that people want to see you now and, and catch up with what you're doing now, um, how can we catch up with you? What have you been doing? What, what, what does the future I do a lot of you? gigs. I'm one of the, I still haven't stopped playing music. So I've a lot of news cafes, so you can go and to donate my Facebook page. You can find and, uh, where, where I'm performing. Uh, I always advertise there, you know. Uh, but we, we still, I was at the Rancho uh, Easter. Yes. I went to Oatswood there for the Kaka Inca Festival and uh, there's a, at the uh, Garden Route Casino. Uh, that same week, did a couple of gigs, you know. So I'm, I'm a live artist, one of those vintage bands 
good music. We play pop, uh, uh, we play covers and, and my stuff. So we, do, we have done a lot of corporate functions over the years and, and parties and things. So that's what we do. So keeping in touch would be Facebook? On Facebook, yeah.